Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Veloy EZ35. This is, from what I can see, one of the easiest ways to use a digital camera to scan in your 35mm film. In the box, what you will see first is the quick start guide. This is actually a very well written guide on uh, everything that's in the kit as well as some very useful information and tips on how to get the best results. Now of course your results will vary based on the equipment you're using but this book is actually uh, well written enough that it'll get you a good start if you don't if you're just you know unsure where to start. So I highly recommend read through the quick start guide um, if you have any questions before you start using this machine. The other things you'll have in here is a set of filter ring adapters. So they're all centered around a 62 millimeter filter thread. The one that I'll be using today is the 49 uh, 62. So 62 on the female thread, 49 on the male thread. And then you get a whole bunch of other ones with a USB-C charger and an Allen key. I'm not exactly sure what the Allen key is for, but they give you one nonetheless. You will also then get a set of these, uh, I'm going to call them extension tubes. They're really just spacer tubes. There are five of them. There are the large ones, and then one medium and one small. Roughly here, the large ones are about 30 millimeters, the medium one is about 20 millimeters, and the smallest one is about 10 millimeters. So with these, you should be able to have any reasonable lens be able to work with this system. And then finally, you have the light source and film holder. Right here, you can see the opening for where your film is going to go, so your film slides from the right out through the left. You can use a whole roll, like 35 frames or more, or you can just have a small roll that, um, the example I'm going to use today is just using five, and uh, it just goes right through there. You can push this out. Um, there are different film holders you can get. This is the standard 35 millimeter holder, just to get you, you know, more or less just the frame of your photo, not the the borders, and that's fine for me, I don't really need borders. And on the back you have your power selector and brightness selector right there. Over here you have your color temperature, so warm is counterclockwise and cold is clockwise. In the manual it recommends that for color negative you go full cold, for color positive you go full warm, and for black and white, you're, you know, you set it to a neutral color temperature. It charges via USB-C here, and there is a, an indicator light on in the back for the state of charge. The only thing I wish this thing had is an indicator light on the top somewhere that will tell you if it's on or off, because I've already left this thing on for a while, because when you have these, these tubes on, the only indication that the power's on is this little indicator light on in the back and the little bit of light leaking out the side. And if you're not paying attention, which I wasn't, you're just going to leave this thing on, so be aware of that. Now let's quickly talk about how you set this thing up to work with your camera. I'll be using my Pentax MZS just as a stand-in prop for this. So first what you want to do is get the camera that you're going to use and get a lens on it that can focus down to a one-to-one -one setting, which means um, any object in real life is has an image reproduction on your sensor of one-to-one. -one. Um, a, a true macro lens can um, focus down to a one-to-one, -one. otherwise you'll have to use extension tubes or something similar. But once you get that set up and you're at that, that focus distance, you want to measure. Um, I actually just used an actual um, a piece of film and I set it up here. That way I could focus on an actual frame. And once I could see the frame matched in my viewfinder on the screen of my camera. So then what you do is just measure this distance and or just estimate the number of tubes you need to make up that distance. The longer your focal length, the longer that distance is going to be. The shorter your focal length, the shorter that distance is going to be. Just whatever lens you have, hopefully it's within the recommended range by Veloy. If it's not, um, you may have to get too close or be too far away for this system to work properly. So let's just say that this lens requires three of the longer tubes. Okay. 
There you go. So screw the tubes into the light source. The lens on this camera has a 55 millimeter filter thread, so I'm going to use the 62 to 55 adapter. And then very carefully, however you decide to do it, get the lens and camera also on this stack up. It is very, very important that you don't cross thread any of these connections and that you do not over tighten them. All right, and that's all there is to it. From here, you will just slide your film in, turn on the light source, turn on your digital camera, um, get things lined up, focus properly, and start shooting. The actual lens and camera combination that I'm going to use is the Olympus, the Olympus 100mm f2.8. The reason why I'm choosing this lens is it is um, quite sharp when stopped down to f5.6 or f8. It also has minimal distortion and is a pretty clean lens optically. Um, the lens down here, this is a Vivitar 28mm f2 and this lens has a lot of character to it. While this lens is great for taking photos, it is not good for scanning because all of its wonderful characters, also some people would consider them flaws, will then manifest themselves in your reproduction, which you don't want. You want the most boring lens you can get. Um, this is not a boring lens, but for my setup, it's the one that's going to work best. On this lens, I have the Olympus uh, macro focusing tube. So this tube is mainly meant for the actual macro lenses that Olympus pr produced, where you have to use this to make the lens focus to infinity. Um, but it's just a it's just a straight pass-through tube, so any lens that any Olympus OM lens can fit onto it. And it works just like a variable length extension tube. So that's what I'll be using today. So I've selected a few frames of black and white film to use for this demonstration. You want to make sure that you're looking through the image through the correct side. In other words, so that the image reads in the normal way. If you have it the other way around, all your images will be flipped, and that's fine, but you'll have to flip them in post, and that's just an extra step. So on the Veloy, slide it in through the right side, and there you will see your image. And then you carefully push your film through to the next frame, and really it's easier to just pull the film through, but do not touch the frames always touch the edges. So now I'll actually hook my uh, Sony a7 up to this and I'll show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like on your camera once you have the whole setup in place. You can see that the standard film holder gives you just a little bit of the film border so that you can crop in nicely. Um, this for my photography is all I need. Again I don't really like the film border look that much. And this frame right here is at the end of the strip of five. And from all the testing that I've done so far, whether your shot is at the end of a strip of film or in the middle, the quality is the same. Um, I was just, one of my concerns before I got this was if the end was going to look as good as the middle, just because of how the film kind of wraps through the film holder but I think everything looks great. And again from here you just take your shot and process it in post. I saw the Veloy EZ35 um, a few months ago and it wasn't available at that time. I think it was a, still at the end of its Kickstarter campaign. Um, I didn't support it on there because it was closed and I generally just don't do that. But I knew that I had to have this just because of the, the ease is it better than an Epson or another flatbed scanner? Maybe. It really depends on your lens and camera combination. Again, I'm using an Olympus OM 100mm f2.8. Pretty good lens for this. And then I'm also using the original Sony a7. It's a 24 megapixel camera. Um, I think it does well enough in terms of, like, for black and white film. I think it does great for color. Eh, this camera isn't so great. Um, I think the Sony a7, maybe the later models are better, but this one, the colors just seem a little off to me, especially the greens. The greens I've never been happy with on this camera. 
the other thing I think is that 24 megapixels from just, you know, the pixel peeping that I'm doing, I don't think 24 is enough to fully resolve a lot of 35 millimeter film. I think you do really need something between 30 and 40 megapixels. Um, probably 36 would be a sweet spot just to make sure that you're getting all the information on each frame of film. 24 on some film is enough. On other film, I think is sorely lacking. But the convenience of doing this versus flatbed scanning, I think makes up for that in most cases. So at the end here, I will show you a couple sample images that I've taken, and then uh, you can decide for yourself if the quality is what you think it should be. So until next time, see ya.